One, two, one. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Where nice. are you going to go on TV or on the internet to listen to an interview? And the interviewer comes on playing a gold cornet, playing a song called Strutting with Some Barbecue, written by Louis Armstrong's wife, Lillian. I'll tell you where to go. You go to this show, Life After Scientology, and I'm Ron Miscavige. Good morning, everybody. Let me put my, let me put my horn down here. Okay, so I thought I'd give it a kick. I've had some people ask me on the comments, you know, why don't you play your horn at the beginning? So for all of you that requested it, there you go. Now, we have a great show this morning with the person who you all love and knowledgeable beyond belief as far as the church is concerned. Uh, as a matter of fact, she's spent 40 years in the cult and I was in for 42 years. That's 82 years combined of experience. So we're not talking about something that we read in the book someplace. We actually lived that life. And before I get started on the actual interview itself, I just want to bring up a couple points. And one of them is Patreon. That's something that you can do if you want to contribute to the ongoingness. And that's a word I made up. I agree. If you want to contribute to the ongoingness of this show, go on to my website, which is therealronmiscavige.com. And you can become a Patreon and instantly you can go from being a spectator or just a listener into an actual participant where you're doing something about what we talk about, which right now we're, we're talking about the abuses of the Church of Scientology. So there you go. Now, without any further words, I'd like to bring my guest up this morning. You've seen a couple pictures over there. You know, we switched it over. If I don't talk, you can see here. Watch. There you go. Karen De La Courier, good morning. Good morning, Ron. Hello, everybody who's listening. Hello. Okay, so <clears throat> look at let's get right into it because we have some points. I got some bullet points written down so I don't miss any of the things we want to talk about. And what we want to talk about this morning is money talks. And I want to talk about, and of course, Karen, we're going to talk about the abuses that the church does in regards to taking away money from parishioners that some of these stories well all of them are horrendous but let's kick off this one about a person in your area and you mentioned her name was barbara i guess you don't want to mention her last name do you uh well yeah okay that's fine no, i'll tell you what before we do that let's get into the accolades that these people get from either contributing money or taking huge amounts of money from parishioners. And one of the things they do is <clears throat> at the events, these people are considered heroes. Do you want to go into this a little bit, Karen? Yeah, yeah. The new rock stars of Scientology are the big donors. They're known as whales. A whale is a big, big fish. And if you're big, big, big money for Scientology, you are put in their glossy magazines. Your picture hangs in the halls of Scientology churches. You, in fact, if you are willing to give $5 million, you can be filmed a photo taken of your son, David Miscavige, on the cover of Impact magazine. And David himself will pose with you for five million dollars. Wow. And that <laughs> so yes, the new rock stars, you are love bombed. You give money, you are a hero. Correct. Oh yeah. And then these people, 
uh, when they give this, I understand they're they're actually forced to write a success story about how good <laughs> they felt after they gave the money. In the in these magazines, you get a person who was just milked for two point five million dollars, and they write a success story, a kind of euphoric. There is nothing in the world that has ever made me happier, more certain of myself, more deliriously joyful. I, I feel a bliss. <laughs> and I wonder if after they write that success story and they leave the room, they have to take an ammonia capsule and stick it to their nose or they're <laughs> going to faint when they realize, what the hell did I do? <laughs> I am positive some of these people get that feeling later on. I wanted to tell you this really quick story of Barbara. Go on. Barbara was 78 or 80, 80 years old. She lived down the road from me in my neighborhood. Her husband died. While the dead body was still in the morgue, the salespeople arrived. The salespeople in Scientology are called Regis. Regis is slang for registrar. They emptied every account she had. Now, her husband hadn't been buried. They got his uh, his pension. They got, they got his life insurance policy. They emptied her bank accounts and made her take out a trust deed on her home that she owned free and clear they left with very high six figures in four in the morning and this 82 year old woman now had a mortgage to pay and had to go back to work to even put food on the table that's the kind of stuff that happens in Scientology a yeah. widow who hadn't buried her husband now in debt mm -hmm. How much money did they take from her? I, I've i seen the, again, she was glorified. You know, I saw her picture in a magazine. It was over a million dollars. She, she wasn't some billionaire, <laughs> yeah. but they took everything, everything. So between 11 o'clock at night and four o'clock in the morning. She was still grieving. The body was lying cold in the morgue in Scientology, she got the money. And at that point, your your defenses are down because you're in a yeah. weakened condition, yeah. grieving. She'd uh, been married 40, 50 years to him. And Scientology got it all. If they just sniff that there is money, um, one thing that is so hypocritical, that is so outrageous is Scientology is a pay-as-you-go service. You pay quid pro quo. You pay, you get a service. You pay, you get counseling. Now, if they screw up in counseling, if they make an error and you just, they're doing the wrong thing, you're not happy, you feel miserable, you must pay new money to repair what they just screwed up. You have to now pay. There's no free repair. It's always double dipping. If wow. they talk about ethics, if you buy a, an iPod, an iPad, something and it, there's a defect, you take it back, you get instant money back or yeah. a new iPad. In Scientology, no matter what they do wrong, if you feel you need to handle your upset, you must pay in, <laughs> again it, yeah. to handle the damage they've just done to you. That, that's on the verge of, well, it is unbelievable, but it's true. And that's the sad thing about it, that what you're saying does happen. It really is like you take a car in to get something repaired. Uh, you leave the dealer or the, the garage. It's totally screwed up. You take it back. They'll fix it. Exactly. They, they charge to you. Yeah, there's no fixing in Scientology without new money. New money. Now, I... <laughs> we we got to keep on going because I could continually say they're just a bunch of criminals, which they really are. I mean, and they're not just bad guys. They know exactly what they're doing and they do it with no compassion, whatever. And their minds are so conditioned, these regs, 
that they feel that they're doing it for the greater good of all. Meaning the fact that they took this lady for a million dollars or around that in five hours, they'll yes. walk out thinking, man, I'm really a good member of the church. And, you know, this is going to help a, a lot of dynamics. This is for the greater good, which is the biggest lie of all. But this doesn't happen in one day. This is after years or in some cases, less than a year of indoctrination, like especially with the young people they get and they recruit for the sea organization when they're doing a security check, they'll start pulling your withholds and have you describe various uh, things that you were involved in that you just don't feel comfortable telling. These young kids will get it out of you and it's recorded and they'll use it on you to keep you in line. But yeah. now along these lines, I understand that at one point it was so bad that American Express pulled their participation in this. Is this true or is this just yeah. something I heard? No, 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 no. In more than one case, you have to authorize your credit card being used. You can't just have people run money on your credit card without authorization. At Los Angeles Org on Sunset Avenue and Flag Service Org, numerous charges were made over and over and over again. And people would call and complain. This is unauthorized. And it was so bad that American Express completely canceled the ability and privilege to use the card in both those churches. After several years, Flag Service Org got back those privileges. But it was, it was uh, uh, <laughs> American Express. Another thing they did very harmful, I hope someone from American Express is listening. Um, they actually, they means the salespeople, the regis, actually coached people to pay $40,000 patron, which it was in those days, it's now 50,000 bill it to American Express and then declare bankruptcy and stiff American Express. And there were a dozen people that did that. Wow. Darcy Hollingsworth and Jessica Hollingsworth were the re were the salespeople that told me about it that actually did it. They actually coached people. Oh, American Express is wealthy. Just declare bankruptcy. It's no big deal. You get back your stuff in a few. And they did to give the church $40,000 that they didn't have and couldn't pay back American Express. The, the greed and lust for money within the church is beyond anything you can imagine. It's, it's unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> well, they need money to buy all these new buildings and they need money to pay their A-lister lawyers and their private investigators. See, they're such a criminal, criminal entity. This is a criminal mafia-like organization, religious mafia, we'll call it, because yeah, well, maybe they, okay. you know, in, in, in my but, case, in my case alone, I had two private investigators follow me yes. for at least a year and three months, and they were getting paid ten thousand dollars a week. Um, a week, forty thousand. Yeah, and that was 40, two people. Uh, Dwayne Powell and his son, Daniel Powell. That's the name yeah. of the private investigators. Yeah. Dwayne Powell and Daniel Powell. 10 Gs a week. A week. And what? They, they, they were blowing the money like what they used to say in the old days, like a drunken sailor. Uh, yeah. They'd go out and buy guns. They bought houses. They bought Corvettes and just sprayed the money around. And at one point when they were getting interviewed, and by the way, their interview is on my website if you want to hear at, and you go to therealronmiscavige.com, you can hear the interview that Nick Pye and Ricky Hankins did with the two private investigators. And they said, look, if we lose this, we're going to lose everything. So I guess they violated all kinds of uh, financial policies or what you would call fiscal responsibility, bought something with a down payment and then couldn't afford it. Ah, look. What, what, uh, that, yeah. The, no. Their private investigator bill could, and lawyer bill could easily be one to two million dollars a month. Yeah. And these people who are extorted, absolutely extorted yeah. at the time of death, whatever. Um, oh, yeah. That's where the money's coming from. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it's and then these, uh, then I know that this was happening, and mind you, this is years ago. Like people would die, and there was money on their account, and they would build that dead person's yeah. account for yeah. instead of the basics. And uh, how much were the basics in those days? Was it three thousand dollars? Three thousand and five thousand with the C DVDs, CDs. Um, yeah, they build dead people's accounts and then report it as a sale. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then I, I know this for a fact that in the flag area, there's uh, a birthing area. There used to be, I don't know if there is still now, it's called a hacienda. And each building was considered an entity. Whereas whatever that building would get in income would build toward their becoming, let's say, a patron. In those days, it was $40,000. So if the building <laughs> got enough money in commissions to consider themselves a pat patron, they would be awarded. They'd say, this building is now a patron. They, they've contributed $40,000. And by the way, they didn't get the commission. Those commissions were then used to pay the phone bills. And then I also heard, and you can bear this out if this is true, they could not go to sleep unless they hit their quota at night. Oh, boy. When the basics first came out, CO members who already work 80-hour weeks, 100-hour weeks, were not allowed to have sleep time until they met a quota. And this was the time that a huge amount of people fled. People were just leaving. People couldn't take this kind of life. They just departed. They just, what we call blue, blue, blow. <laughs> blue means leave without authorization. Yeah. And, uh, you know, th he, he, the primary statistic of management is revenue, cash. The primary statistic worldwide, Ron, is not, it's not how many people did we rescue, how many happy people. It's how much cash did you make? That's the bottom line in Scientology. Cash, cash. It's all about the cash. That's what Scientology is all about. Well, that I know to be true. That I remember... When I was in a C organization, toward the end of my tenure there, uh, in my in basket, I wouldn't get reports on successful or success stories about people completing the briefing course or some auditing program. What we used to get is various people who have become uh, donors of a million dollars or two million dollars. In other words, reports on how much money they collected for nothing because when you think about it you're going to become a, a patron which now i think is fifty thousand dollars you give fifty thousand dollars you get a piece of paper saying that you're a patron that's it that's what you get delivered a piece of paper with your name and the new status that you have that's pretty good fifty thousand dollars for a piece of paper and in some cases five million or ten million dollars then you get a big trophy that you'd get, like if you won a bowling match, and uh, that that's that's what they give in exchange for taking money away from. But people. you see, this is the hypocrisy. This is this is what gets when people come in and do courses and study. It all looks so good. It looks terrific on paper. Yeah. Exchange is a high high valued principle in Scientology. Exchange in abundance is the top level. And then one level below is great exchange. And then below quid pro quo, just giving exactly what you pay for. And then below that is rip-off exchange. And below that is stealing and theft. No, I think there's short change, then rip-off. But this is rip-off. We yeah, will no. take all your money. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, just I know a lot of people understand this, but quid pro quo is something for something. Is that yes, correct? Exactly. You pay one dollar, you get one can of Coca Cola. Okay. You don't get. They don't then give you a bagel as a reward for buying the Coke, right? right. Yeah, so I can tell you. Huh? Listen, I, I'm that old that back in the '40s, 
you bought a Coca-Cola for five cents. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but now you go into an airport and you're going to pay two dollars and seventy five cents for a bottle of water. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's inflation. But yeah, th that is what it is. Now, as far as you paying the money and let's say you paid money in for a service. Why don't you tell how you could quote get unquote your money back a refund oh tell us how this works because this is interesting <laughs> there first of all because of the avalanche worldwide of people requesting money back thanks to them thanks to the leah rimini aftermath show people are seeing the the other side of scientology the truth and the request for refunds is just as in fact i heard they have a task force a task force in the hollywood guarantee building to try and sort out do something but let me let me say in one one sentence scientology will not give you a refund not even if you gave them some money and you haven't taken any service, you've never even used it, you will not get your money back. Scientology is a one-way street of extracting money from you, and you can kiss it goodbye. And they use these excuses like, we don't have to refund, we're a religion. It was a donation. There is no legal leg you could, now go pound, go pound sand. Yeah. You're not getting your money back. In fact, some of, they're now scared to write this kind of letter because they're all on the internet. <laughs> if you put Scientology refund on Google and click images, you'll see some of these letters. <laughs> so there is no refund. But there's also a catch-22. Howard said when you ask for your money back, you're declared suppressive person. Ron, just examine that. He's declaring. An antisocial personality, a psychopath, a Hitler, a Stalin, because you asked for your money back from Scientology. That's Scientology doctrine written by Hubbard. You ask for money back, you are now a suppressive person. I mean, when you're out of all the mindset, it seems, what? <laughs> He's now got a new definition for evil. You are evil because you asked for your money back. Anyway, you're now declared suppressive person. Now, and wait, wait hang on a second, Karen. Let me ask you a question. Let's say you're sitting down in front of a registrar, right? Mm -hmm. And he talks you into buying uh, an IAS lifetime member. Not, not that. Let's say uh, you want to contri contribute money to be a trained auditor and you've given them let's say twenty thousand dollars right there uh -huh. one minute later you say i changed my mind you mean to tell me even if it was that quick you couldn't get that money back well in that situation if the purse if the registrar refused it the person would go home and do a charge back on their credit cards if they wrote a check they would stop the check because clearly this doesn't come under e it hasn't even been banked or run hardly yet so you can stop it but that would be you doing it not the church no, no. i mean church what i'm not. saying is you may not. say mm -mm. Or to, let's say you put it on your credit card and you say oh you know what i changed my mind i want to do it next year i don't want to pay this money in would the red say oh that's fine okay well we'll just take this charge off would they do that <laughs> You could have a sudden medical condition. Your father could be dying. You could need some cash. You could beg for them to release them your money, which they have on account, and you run into a brick wall of refusal. Okay. Once you pay Scientology, uh, this is a real warning. Your money is gone with the wind. They will not refund that money. And they feel they have a right to keep it. Plus, they like to use up any money you have there. I would get 
they, if you've got a bunch of money on account, you are liable to get phone calls to say, there are these, these guys in Africa and they're starving for knowledge and truth. Can we just take 10,000 out of your money and send them all these volumes of Hubbard data? Because this starving village in Africa, these uh, black ministers, they are begging and asking us, could we please donate an L. Ron Hubbard library? So, <laughs> so money sitting on account, people are hit on to use it up and not let it sit there so that new money can be extorted from you. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> and the chance of those people reading those books are pretty low. Oh, there's no evidence that they're ever even sent there, but the money's subtracted from the account. I wanted to tell you, I wanted to tell you a story to back up my earlier comment that the prime, the absolute primes first of all scientology is run like a business right if it walks like a duck quacks like a duck talks like a duck it is a duck yeah. and the irs said that about scientology yeah. scientology is run like a business talks like a business extorts money thursday before two o'clock like a business there's always the rise thursday before in scientology every single statistic is from Thursday, two o'clock to Thursday, two o'clock. And you are as good as last week's statistics. It doesn't matter what you did for the cult in earlier times. I was, do you remember Mark Ingber? Of course I do. Yeah, he's still there, die hard. Liz Ingber had a stroke. His wife who lives on and on with all her cancer all those years. Did you know that Liz is? Oh, yes, I, I did know yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, Mark Ingber sends me to New York from Clearwater. Wait, wait. Did you say Mark Ingber sent you? Yes, sent oh, me. Me. Sorry, I, I diverted on Liz. I know you and I knew her for years. Yeah. Um, when revenue has crashed, Scientology believes there is a who that suppressed and created a dip in revenue coming in. Okay, wait, wait, before, you, before you go on, when you say a who, are you saying that a person is going to be named? Yes. And that person is the fault of the money drying up for that week or that day? Is that what you mean by that? Yes. Well, yes, of course. Scientology believes there is a who for everything there would have been a who and if the music that was played on free winds which you did if the band was not a hundred percent on the ball there was a who yeah a okay. who is where you point the finger of blame to one specific badass that is the who yeah a who and scientology seeks out the witch hunts to find a who in everything. In the days of David Mayo, there was hardly any reference. People, it was unheard of. On the Apollo, when I was with Hubbard and we ordered to Dell, not one person ever asked for a refund in those years. Wow. So this, this shows you how the evolution of the golden age of technical bullshit <laughs> yeah. causes more and more refund, refund. Anyway, back to my story. I was sent to New York very suddenly on a plane because an evaluation had been done, an analysis, and Eastern United States revenue, which is statisized, how much money have we taken in, went shh. The statistic went down, 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 down. So I was sent to get, do a confessional sec check to the commanding officer called Bo Wenberg. Rest in peace, Bo. He's long since died. So I arrived there. I don't have 
Bo Weinberg's folders. I know nothing about him. I just have the confessional questions. And I find the guys pretty clean. I, I, I know he's not getting enough sleep. And it took two, three days to have him sessionable, but I couldn't find any crimes. In Scientology, the belief is you must be harming the growth and expansion of Scientology if you're creating some scene where statistics go down. It's run like a business. How many crates of Coca-Cola were shipped to Disney Thursday before 2 o'clock? It's management is run by the statistics. And by punishment. <laughs> the yeah. is there. Don't let that out because that, that is but their ace up the street. What a construct. Punishment. What a construct. What a, what a matrix. Yeah. And we are entirely in the bubble when we're in. We believe all this. I know. So I go back to flag. And then three days later, I'm summoned by the international justice chief. The international justice chief, his name is Hamish, Hamish Hamilton, right. an Australian. <laughs> he was the highest ethical term, ethics terminal, and he blew, he fled <laughs> a, few, uh, a year or two after my episode with him. He, he had enough, enough of the crazy, <laughs> yeah. he fled back to Australia. So Hamish calls me in and says, Karen, you're going up on the decks and actually he's looking at some telexes. You're going to clean the drain pipes and you're going to clean. You are assigned for 16 hours a day to clean greasy pots and pans in the galley. Galley means kitchen. Right. And I said, why? And he said, you went to New York. You did a confessional, and Bo has blown. Blow means fled, escaped. Blow vanished. Therefore, I missed a withhold or secret. Therefore, I was going to hit the skates. And he said, all your certs are canceled. Um, you you're going to be escorted to the galley and this is what you're going to do now the eval an evaluation is an analysis yeah made me the who <laughs> the who I, we explain a who for the entire eastern united states it said with the maliciousness and evil in my heart because I asked 15 questions to Bo Wenberg, because of my evil, I desperately wanted to harm Scientology. So I deliberately, with malice of forethought, didn't pull Bo's secret. And that's what precipitated Bo blowing. Jesus. So here's right. New York and all the Eastern United States, Miami, all of it. I had absolutely nothing to do with, but I was the who collapsing Scientology's no. finance. For, and, and this goes through ABC, you know, evals. Can, yeah. can you just imagine this, this nonsense? Anyway, <laughs> to wrap up the story, Ray Midoff, senior CSN, came to my rescue. Three, four weeks later, Ray had been out of town. Ray didn't know any of this was going on. What happened is Bo had cancer, severe cancer. And it went a little bit into remission, but he was warned by his doctors. If you drink coffee and smoke and stay up till three in the morning, four in the morning, living the lifestyle you do, you will die. Mm. After this little confessional I did, he went back to the doctor because his cancer fled up again, and he fled to save his life. He wow. had nothing to do with my 
confessional. Nothing to do with my subject. Nothing. And Ray well, Midhoff wrote all this. You see, I, I didn't know I was asking questions to a cancer case. There was no availability of history or folders. Anyway, the point is, I went through hell for those three weeks. Wow. I often go, I often think that when I met with you at Inkbase, that was, but th this, this was hell on earth, right? Oh, yeah. And do you think there was any apology that I had that I suffered those three? Did, do you think anyone came and said, God, we're really sorry? Not Get anybody. back on post. This is all cleared up now. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I'll tell you, criminal, I... criminal entity, criminal policy, criminal organization that needs to tweak and not continue in the form it's in. Mm -hmm. And this is all from minds of people who have justified this behavior. Yeah. That's the yeah. real dangerous thing, that yeah. they're doing that is all justified because it was for the greatest good, I'm sure. And they made a mistake. Uh, okay, fine. Yeah. Okay. Karen, get back on post. <laughs> That's the state of mind. And the, the bad tricks. thing about it is it's all justified. And this is, look, at, I'm sure it's not just Scientology. I'm sure any group that has ever existed <laughs> who pulled stuff like this yeah. had it justified in their own mind. What they were doing was for the good of the person and for the good of all. Um, well, okay. Look. <laughs> I guess we could go on with this for uh, days, but there's one thing I want to make sure that we do cover. And that is after you complete a service. I mean, there's other things we can get into, but let's take up this one right now. Okay. Let's say you complete a service and you, you're you done what you went to flag for. Of course, in their mind, you're never done until they've taken all of your money you turned over your eyeballs for research and they got money for that. In other words, everything. Don't you have to go through certain people and they have to sign off before you can leave? Get, well, get into that a little bit, know, if you don't mind, Karen. Flag, flag is very much rigged. Once you step there, you looked at an ATM machine. How much can they get out of you? You can't just go to flag and clear water and sail on and off the base. The idea is to extract maximum dollar for you. And the procedure in the, in the cult is, as you um, arrive and leave, you've got to go through a checklist of meeting different people who will sign off. When you've finished your services at FLAG, you go to seven different people who have to sign off to give you permission to actually leave. It's called routing out your route, the route you're doing that. And all those seven people hit on you hard for money. ID log money. Yeah, go ahead. Karen, who, who are some of these people? Why don't you name is exactly who that would be as an example? Well, it, first of all, Currently, there's a new Hubbard Museum being built. And they want money for the museum. So Hubbard, it used to be superpower, but now that opened, they can't keep milking people for that. So now they milk people for the new Hubbard Museum. And then they want money for your local ideal org, for the ideal org project. Then they want money to fight psychiatry. CCHR is the entity that wants donations to help take out the evil of psychiatry right. on the planet, which they believe is a who meddling with. <laughs> you and I are supposedly on a psychiatric payroll. The only reason that we are talking out like this is the pharmaceutical industry and the psychiatric industry are secretly paying us. Do you know that they tell their parishioners this? They literally do tell, oh, they're on the payroll. They're on the payroll. Um, anyway, 
I, so, you know, I, I'll tell you, just as an aside, I would like to find out who's supposed to send me that money because I haven't received oh. one goddamn penny from them so far. <laughs> I think they're giving him the money and he's putting it in his own pocket. And I object <laughs> to that. If I'm going to be accused of getting psychiatric payoffs, hey, let's see the cash, man. <laughs> I think it's so ludicrous. It's hardly worth commenting on, but I, I'm commenting on it, okay? So go ahead. And the, these terminals now, and I'm sure they're getting their head put in a vice and it's being tightened up or putting a thumb screw to make sure they get money from you. I don't think that they can say, oh, well, okay, fine. You're ready to go. That person would get their asses kicked from here to Sunday for doing that, wouldn't they? Absolutely. Ron, this, this whole thing of money extortion is quite dirty. It's, it's conspiratorial even. If you mention in session to your auditor, your counselor, that you've just closed a deal and there's this sort of money coming in or you have this account and you've just got an inheritance, all that money is leaked from this privileged communication to the registrars, the salespeople. So they, they know. In other words, you think you're just talking privately and confessing and talking one-on-one. -on -one. But this, if you've got money, this is leaked so that salespeople know to come and prey on you. Uh, I know of people who were reluctant to even look happy. Let's say they realize something in counseling. Because if they looked happy, immediately the vultures would say, oh, see, you've got to win in Scientology. Now give us more money. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I can see their thinking, uh, you know, guy come out of session. Oh, boy, doesn't this work great? Well, look, yeah. now that you're happy, let's get more money to now us. Now we need more money. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, that's that's how they operate. And this is the Church of Scientology. Well, it's, it's the cult of Scientology. And it's often the result, often many, many couples in the long run, the main reason of divorce even if one of the married couple likes Scientology and the other does not, the amount of overwhelming gouging of the couple's finance is often just too much for the husband or the wife that's lukewarm about Scientology. They're, they're not even speaking out about it, but their finance is just completely drained. Wow. You know, Ron, I cannot... I just cannot emphasize enough that this is a cult that absolutely wants your cash beyond anything. And you just have to, you step into a church at your own risk. These are professional vultures. They know every trick on the book to push your button to extort that money. These are absolute they will dig into every nook and cranny something very disturbing ron is that certain banks i'm going to name chase manhattan have an arrangement with the cult to give a forty thousand dollar loan for bridge i've had three different phone calls from around the united states of people saying guess what they're calling me to say, you don't have any money problems. You can do bridge. We've right. got a guaranteed $40,000 loan for you. What is Chase Manhattan thinking about? You know, this gives me an idea. Yeah. I did something with Chase regarding some, eh, I won't get into the issue. And the, the high up execs were very, very cool. This is a completely disrelated issue, nothing to do with the, the cult or anything like that. Right. But I think I should write and blow the whistle on this. Another one giving them, lifting all their limits is Bank of America. You know, you can't tell a reg, look, I have no more credit. They think, what? Rubbish. They've, th there's recently been older senior citizens that they raked 
money out of and let them leave after they owed $75,000. They were able to raise limits on credit cards. Wow. How can they do this? It's all, they've got lines in with major banks. Mm -hmm. Wow. That does not speak highly of bankers, does it? Well, bankers want to lend you money because they're looking at the interest. They're not looking at. <laughs> they're not looking at the consequences of your life. Or that you're not going to pay. You're, you're a high risk default. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, there's the story. And I, I got a question. I think the main question is this. Is this actually a church? <laughs> I mean, ask yourself that question. And if you're still a member of it, if you're still, and I'm not saying this to make you wrong, but drinking the Kool-Aid is what we would say. Because I drank it for many years. Listen, I used to recruit people for the sea organization. I used to teach people how to Me sell. Too. I had to look at myself in the mirror one day and say, you know what? I've been conned. I've been doing the bad things. And I got to do something. And I, I said, it, not necessarily in these words, kind of make up the damage. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this show. Yeah. I want to inform people. Because if you don't have the answer to that question, is this a church? To think they are, and I say this with all due respect, to think they are, you'd have to be an idiot or uninformed. Yeah. And I think after this show, if you listen to it again, you're going to say to yourself, I've been uninformed. I, I was not informed. I, I can see now that this is not for the good of me or my family or any of my friends. Ron, you know, Scientology really spun this IRS decision. The IRS cannot say what is a religion and what is not a religion. They're not even authorized to do that. They're only authorized to say, did you meet the qualifications for tax exemption? Right. That you, have to, you have to just meet their demands. Does it have a moral code? Do you have Sunday service? Do you believe in a higher power? You, it's just, I mean, the IRS are composed of CPAs and lawyers and clerks. Right. You, you, as far as believing in a higher power, there is no question. There is no God in Scientology. No, Absolutely no, not. No, no. And the other thing is you have to show that somehow what you're doing is for the benefit of the people. Like any church should have something where, I don't know if you have a soup kitchen or have a place to go to pray or maybe have a confession where you relieve yourself of some of the things you've done that you're not proud of and not have these revealed to the general public. In other words, there's got to be benefit to the person going to this church. And on all those points, the Church of Scientology does not qualify, okay? You know, yesterday, the chief of police of Clearwater did a rambling defensive video. It's all over, it's, you know, all over the Facebook groups and stuff. And he rambled on about religion, religion, calling, calling Scientology religion. He said, <laughs> wow. He, so this was in defense of the aftermath because there's a backlash, backlash on Clearwater police. Yeah. But the IRS didn't say Scientology was a religion. It said it has 501c3 tax exemption because it met some quals, qualifications. Okay. Well, Karen, uh, I, I'm, I'm glad I got you on because this, I think, is important information for people to have. And I appreciate you coming on with your actual experience. This is not, as I said at the beginning of the show, this is not something that Karen and I read in the book. We lived the life and we've experienced yeah. these things. I just want and, to say one more thing. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, Ron. No, it's all right. Go on. It's wealthy. It's a fat, deep pockets religion with a few billion dollars, three to five billion dollars. But Scientology does nothing, nothing for a soup kitchen, for an orphanage, for the needy. For In fact, it considers homeless people to be degraded beings. That's degradation. Yeah. So... In all the wealth Scientology extracts, it does not give back to the community at all. It hoards stockpiles and buys more and more real estate, which is why 
they have a bigger and bigger real estate portfolio. Scientology does nothing for the environment, nothing for people in distress. And that's really important to know. The money is sucked in only for the glory and benefit of Scientology. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that was it. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> glad you brought that up because that's a very important point. Now, I'm getting a signal from my producer. Sean, do we have any questions here? Yep. Yeah, we have a couple questions for you guys. Um, <clears throat> so Red Scare for $10. Wait, wait a minute. What's the name? Red Scare. He's been on the show. Okay. Red Scare. Um, $10. He says, I too will pose with you for $5 million. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait Good a minute. One, Red. Good one. Hey. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Red, this is for you. Uh oh. <laughs> that, that's a that's a statement. That's not a question. That's but that's wonderful. I'll tell you, I would do it for four million dollars. I'll one up you on that. <laughs> um, and Teresa Atkins for ten dollars again. Thank you, Teresa. Um, she says, question on child abuse slash labor laws. The police arrested Warren Jeffs, the cult leader, for child abuse. How does Scientology still continue to human traffic foreign-born children of new Sea Org members? Karen, you can take that if you'd like. Yeah. Um, first of all, minors have already had their parents sign off and give full custodial the, the, the children are actually turned into Scientology so they're not kidnapped they're not um, human trafficked in that sense they, they have full parental c consent how do they get away with it you know the first amendment has vast vast protections and freedoms this freedom of religion cults that have religious status get away with get away with <laughs> what what Warren Jeffs got away with. Now, let me tell you, you know the the Jim Jones catastrophe where nine hundred children drank nine hundred adults and children drank cyanide and died in Guyana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know that that was an IRS tax exempt religion? Do you know this hateful group that go to funerals, God hates fags, the Westboro Baptist Church? Do you know that they have IRS tax exemption? Yeah. So IRS tax exemption doesn't make you a religion. You can be the most horrific entity, but the IRS gave you religious tax exemption. Now, once you have that, the courts protect what you do because these entities scream in the law courts your honor this is our religion this is religious this is per our religious doctrines and a lot of what Scientology get away with or have gotten away with is because courts and law enforcement are very reluctant to tangle in what's called religious first amendment rights well then let me add something to that though karen because mike rinder brought this up in his blog get a grand jury yeah to investigate yeah. and this way you can get people on and they've got to spill their guts or if they'd be uh, guilty of perjury not, not perjury but it, refusing to uh Go along with what's happening if they if they do this then they'll be in contempt of court and they don't have an attorney there hired by the church to say okay you don't have to answer this here's what to say and a grand jury then would convene and work out whether they should be brought under uh federal laws and decide what to do in other words have them up on charges or whatever but a grand jury would be the way to do it where you don't have a million dollars a day lawyers defending your rights to lie. I don't know if I said that properly, but you get my point, I think. I have great faith in changes coming because the law gets changed. Let me tell you, Rudy Giuliani in New York 
the, first of all, the mafia seemed impregnable. I just unbelievable. Nobody could take out the mafia. They just seemed to go and go and go. So then the law was changed. RICO, racketeering influence corrupt organization. It was a change of the law. And my God, one or two families of New York came right down, 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 because the law was tweaked and changed. Wow. I believe the law going forward in time will be tweaked so that organizations like Scientology with their daily crimes will not be able to get away with it because, but we do need a tweaking of law. I In fact, it. RICO is on the horizon for Scientology. That, that's a very good point, Karen. And I, th I thank you because that, that's the best answer. Good one, John. Um, and Mercini Papadaki asks, uh, will we see Ron or Karen on Scientology in the aftermath again? You know, I have no idea. I mean, I wish I could give you a legitimate answer, but uh, if they were to ask me, I'd be more than happy to do it. And uh, I think I have something to offer up, but it's up to them. And they, 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 they got a good program. They, they don't they, they look for new, new, fresh faces. Yeah. Typically, they would. But I believe that no matter what happens with Mike and Leah on A and E, whether there's a fourth season or not, I believe other networks will pick up this dynamic duo. <laughs> I believe that. Mike Rinder and Leah have raised the bar so oh. high on such a quality of show with such impact. I'm I'm hoping HBO will uh, solicit them for an HBO, and they've got Bill Maher, they've got all kinds of just yeah, chat listen. and things. I, 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 I believe I believe Leah and Mike have a future and <laughs> Scientology will get more and more revealed. Truth will get revealed. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now, if I get an offer from HBO or whatever, Netflix, hey, I'm open. Let's go. <laughs> well, let's get another face in there. And uh, as far as Mike and Leah are concerned, they're, they're two of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And gutsy and willing to come out and stand up and just make an impact. They, they're just... I, feel my I, I know Mike since he's a little kid, like 15 years old in England. And Leah, I met back in the 80s in uh, Los Angeles. So anyway, uh, is that the question, Sean? Okay, so listen, that brings us to an end of this episode. And man, I got to tell you, I, I really appreciate you coming on. Uh, this this was very nice, Karen. And just, uh, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, let me end. It's always, a pleasure, yeah, it's me always end a pleasure. There are a million topics. There's just, just yeah. you can always reveal more truth on the cult. Absolutely. And uh, I got to tell you, um, if you want to help out on this endeavor, remember you can become a Patreon. And we're not asking you for 5 or $10 million for a piece of paper, okay? <laughs> you can help out if you want to contribute $2 or 5 or 10 or 100 bucks, whatever you want. Whatever it is, I think you'll feel better doing that because you're contributing to something that is enlightening a lot of people. And that's what we do on this show. And uh, without any further words, I want to thank you for watching. Another thing you can do is get more subscribers and write to your congressman. Say, hey, listen, what are we going to do about this goddamn cult? All right. So for now, I'm signing off. And uh, oh, I am Ron like Cabbage. I'm sorry, did you want to say something? Yeah. No, oh. no, no. I want to thank you and thank Sean. Thank you. Oh, well, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. I appreciate that. <laughs> Nothing like a little acknowledgement, is there, you know, to put put in, a, you know, an end, not an end to it, but, you know, to top it off. So anyway, I am Ron Miscavige. This is Life After Scientology. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.